I recently bought some green laser pointers on eBay, and somehow they ended up even worse than my already low expectations. So I'm going to tear these things apart and see what I can do to make them stronger. Now before I start tearing these things apart, I want to show you guys exactly why these things are such garbage. For one, the seller must not have tested them before shipping because half of them don't work in the slightest bit. The ones that do work are incredibly dim. Perhaps the biggest issue is that these things can't even light things on fire. Like in this day and age, my laser pointer should be able to incinerate the things that it's pointed at. And honestly, anything less than that is quite embarrassing. Now before I go on, I should probably say that the crazy stuff that you're about to see was done completely for educational purposes. And in fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd probably die, so please don't try this at home. Without further ado, let's tear this thing open. But first I have to set up my makeshift laser lab. You're probably wondering why I just plugged myself into the outlet. Well, that's because I'm keeping myself and my work area grounded to keep any static from building up, as this could fry the sense of electronics I'm about to break into. Now, don't worry, there's a resistor there between me and ground to prevent myself from becoming a light bulb if I were to touch something hot. Don't try this at home, kids. These laser pointers are typically press-fit together, and usually come apart fairly easily with a vise. Now, here I've pulled out the laser module and exposed the driver. Now, notice there's actually a small part on the board that looks kind of like a screw. Now this thing is actually a potentiometer, and it controls the amount of current going into the pump laser diode. Now hopefully, turning it will give us more power. Let's see if this little mod's going to work. First I better put on my laser goggles. That way I'm not instantly blinded. Alright, here we go. Yeah, there's that pathetic output. But, let's see what happens here. Oh, wow, it's, it's definitely brighter. Let's see if it can burn anything. Yeah, it barely stings at all. This thing has a long way to go before I'm satisfied. Even with the potentiometer cranked all the way up, it still just isn't making enough power. So it looks like I'm going to need to make my own power supply. I went ahead and removed this crappy little driver. Now I have the pump diode hooked directly up to my variable power supply. If it proves to be tough, I can build my own driver for it that can handle high power. Alright, let's see what this thing is capable of. Okay, there's a little bit of output. Alright, now we're getting somewhere that's a lot brighter. Although still, I, I think it could be a little bit better than this. Yeah, it definitely needs to be stronger. Let's keep cranking it up. Wait, is that it? Is it dead already? Well, if it wasn't dead earlier, it definitely is now. Here I've torn down the laser cavity to show the internal optics. Now truth be told, this thing was doomed to fail from the beginning. But that being said, the technology inside of a green laser pointer is actually really interesting. So it starts by taking light from this uh, infrared laser diode and feeds it into this uh, neodymium-doped yttrium orthovanidate crystal. And that converts the light into an even deeper infrared. And then that is shown into this uh, harmonic crystal over here, which uh, doubles the frequency into green light. Now, this technology can definitely be scaled up to higher powers, but if I want, say, the brightest laser pointer in all of existence, then I won't be able to jam the necessary crystals and optics into a laser pointer, so I'm going to need something different. Right here I have the Nietzsche NDG7475 green laser diode, which is actually the brightest laser diode out there that can still be jammed inside of a laser pointer. Now this is the future right here. Now just to give you an idea on how fast laser tech has evolved recently, this is the kind of setup that you need to match the output power of this little diode just five years ago. Running this thing bare would kill it in seconds from the waste heat that it produces, so I pressed it into a heat sink by making this tasty laser diode sandwich. Next I soldered it to this tiny buck driver in order to provide current regulation. Now the laser diode itself is rated for a max of 1.8 amps of current, but I decided to push my luck a bit and feed it 2.3 amps. Now this should give me about 1.4 watts of output power, which is downright terrifying for a laser pointer. I'm going to make sure I haven't killed it by testing it on this power supply. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now on the final product, I'll use a lens to converge all the output into a tight beam. Now building a laser pointer of this size is actually pretty tricky. In fact, all my first attempts at building a pen laser were complete failures. But now I've done it a bunch of times and have a pretty good feel for what's going on. Now that being said, this laser pointer is going to present some additional challenges. The biggest is this uh, puny little switchboard here. Like if I were to use this switch to try firing up that giant laser diode, like it would just destroy this thing. Like that's the equivalent of using my pulse laser power supply to power up a light bulb. And 
It's not like I can just jam a bigger switch in here. There simply isn't the space for it. But luckily this is where the MOSFET comes in. This little MOSFET can switch up to 620 amps of current. What a time to be alive, right? Now I'll use this thing to handle the brunt of the power switching. Then I'll use this puny little stock switch to signal to the MOSFET when to turn on. I stripped all the components off the switchboard and then added my MOSFET as well as some resistors. Now actually jamming all this stuff inside the laser pointer turned out to be really difficult. In fact, I spent more time doing this than everything else combined. And lo and behold, here is the completed laser pointer. Now I'm using a glass lens and a threaded mount to make it easier to burn stuff. But there's still one last issue though. The original laser pointer took two AAA batteries. And now considering the new laser circuitry draws about 20 watts, these puny little AAAs just aren't going to cut it. But luckily, the chemical engineers have come up with some awesome lithium ion batteries, like this little 10440 here. Now it's the same size as the AAA, but it's capable of many times higher peak output power. Alright, here we go. Man, why do I even build this kind of stuff? Wait, what? Oh yeah, wrong laser pointer. Let's give that another go. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now that's a laser pointer I'm not ashamed to use. I don't think I can convey just how insane this device is. Like just the very idea of a laser pointer having so much power that exceeds the highest laser danger ratings in the United States is just flat out stupid. Like there's no reason anything like this should ever be made. And yet here I am with a class 4 laser jammed inside of the laser pointer housing. Now before I start incinerating stuff, I want to show you guys some cool fluorescence tricks. Like check out that really cool color change when I hit those fluorescent airzukas, as well as that mailing sticker over there. And also I have this vial here of 2,7-dichlorofluorescein, and it glows a really nice orange. And wow, you can hear it boiling when it hits it. That's crazy. Now it's time for the best part of the video, as I'm about to burn a bunch of stuff with a laser. Now if you skipped ahead of this point just because you want to see some stuff get blown up, well you've come to the right spot. Just to put some numbers behind how bright this thing actually is, a typical one milliwatt red laser pointer has a luminous flux of a little under a tenth of a lumen. Now a green laser pointer comes in at about three lumens. And now my new laser pointer right here has a luminous flux of about 800 lumens, which probably makes it the brightest laser pointer in the entire world. Of course, the brightest laser pointer in the entire world is going to depend on what your definition of a laser pointer is. Now for lasers that fit inside of a two AAA host, this one is likely to be the brightest. Now of course this comes at the expense of a pathetically low duty cycle, and as well as an incredibly short battery life. Now that's all I have for you today, but before I go I want to give a big thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for making videos like this possible. As a thank you for all your generous support, I'm going to let you guys see this video first before I make it public anywhere else. And yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing. What are your thoughts on this circuit, Puddy Tin?
Hey, kitty.